Hey, freaks, it's Friday, September 1st, 2023. Coming up on the program today, virtual couch humping. Plus, dirty knockers and brown sauce sounds about as appetizing as a dying rat in mushroom soup. And a 95-year-old man describes getting dick shot so he can fuck fellow near-deads. All coming up today. Blacks, let's not forget where we came from. Let's learn to love and respect each other. Shuby Taylor. Shu su su wa, shri da, shra la la we, we do sa, shra la la ha, we be bra, we be sa da ra, la da da shri, lo pum pa, la da da shra, we be sa, la da da ra, we da da sa, pi pa, sri do be, sri do tu be be, we da ra, sa ba da ha, sa la ra, sa la ha ya, we it's the distorted view show with tim hansen you know optimus prime is my husband nigga. she likes to start things off by giving me some head her teeth always make my dick raw her teeth oh bitches can't suck a dick worth a damn oh my goodness yes tim hansen back here with you one more time as we end the week with the friday show have a great one for you today i was at costco recently refilling my goddamn dog's prescription you know the one that's on like eight different pills science is the only reason this thing is still alive she's like super old she looks like one of those like horror movie dogs you know like where the you know, the dog's hair is all falling out and what uh, what fur she does have left is all like crazy sticking up and out and she's like missing teeth i'm going to be completely honest with you and and i realize this is going to make me sound like a monster this uh, little dog uh, was inherited right like lord douche had this before i met him so it's not even really my dog that's the way i see it and I feel like I can I can be a little mean because, uh, you know, I am shelling out hundreds of dollars every fucking month to keep this thing alive. So, you know, I'm doing my part. It's not like I'm a bad dog owner. The goddamn thing is on special food. It's gotten to the point where you like you have to carry her up the stairs. She's a decrepit little thing. We've always had a complicated relationship. Me and that little dog. That little dog is the one that's always like, like cleaning itself in the middle of the night when I'm trying to sleep. And you know how I feel about that sound. Oh, I hate it so much. Also, I'm pretty sure it hates me. You know, we keep the dogs confined to like the first floor when we're not around. Every once in a while, they'll, you know, break free. And inevitably, that little shit finds its way to my office or in the bedroom and it just tears my fucking shit up like it'll find a napkin or a sock or something one time lord douche left this bag like this grocery bag full of um like uh, soaps like bars of soap that we but we just bought at the grocery store she tore into that ate it and just like left a sea of soap and wrappers in my room so again it's not that i hate the dog but we both uh, feel challenged by one another. I will say that uh, I occasionally I find myself whispering in the dog's ear, walk towards the light. Don't you just want to sleep for a, you know, for eternity? Oh, you've been through so much. Close your eyes. Oh, the colors of the rainbow bridge are so bright. Feel the warmth. It's a never ending meadow full of toys and treats. Go, go play on the rainbow bridge. Lord douche doesn't like it when I talk like that. Also, I think the dog pretends to be sick on purpose sometimes. Like it'll do this cough thing and you know, which makes sense. She's got heart failure and fucking fluid in the lungs and shit. 
She knows, though, if she really starts coughing, we'll have to take her to the vet, which will cost me money. So uh, every once in a while, I'll start to hear <coughs> over and over and over. And then Lord Deuce, you know, starts to freak out. He's like, ah, we got to take her to the vet. Something's wrong. And then we go to the vet and the vet checks her, uh, you know, lungs and stuff. And she's like, no, oh, she's fine. Actually, we noticed uh, the size of her heart went down a little bit. It's not as enlarged. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? She's going to live even longer? I'm telling you, she's doing this to spite me. My theory is that she's going to outlive me. And when I'm on my deathbed, that's when I'm going to learn that she can speak English. And she's going to whisper in my ear, walk towards the light, asshole. <laughs> And then as I'm dying, that's what I'm going to hear. She's just going to be cleaning herself. Drift off to sleep. To this. She'll be like licking the inside of my ear or something. So it's super amplified. So uh, what I'm getting at is I think I'm going to poison this dog. Look, I got to kill her before she kills me. You won't tell anyone, right? Uh, you know, while I was at Costco... Actually, standing in line waiting for my prescription, I was uh, right next to this giant display of Depends adult diapers. The packaging seems to have undergone uh, yet another revamp. Now, I remember Depends from the 80s. It didn't even show you what the diaper looked like on the package. It literally just said Depends undergarments. Then in the 90s, they changed the packaging and they, uh, they kind of showed you what the diaper looks like on the package. Then... I don't know, in the late 90s, early 2000s, they changed the packaging to actually show models wearing the diaper. You know, it was your standard old man, old woman, gray hair. Now, if you look at the uh, Depends undergarment packaging, you don't know what you're going to get. They've got multiple designs with multiple different type of people. Conservatives would say that Depends has gone woke. They'd be like, why the hell do I need to see a young Asian man in diapers on my Depends packaging? It's true. Now, I understand all sorts of different people are incontinent or experience incontinence at some point, and they have to wear these diapers, young and old alike. But let's face it, it's mostly the elderly. That's when your shitter gives out. You lose control of your bladder. You lose rectal elasticity. I don't know if putting a 30-year-old Ethiopian woman is going to speak to a lot of people. If you don't believe me, and I don't know why you would not believe me on this, but okay, go to walmart.com <laughs> or something and just search for Depend, and you'll see all the different variations, and they don't even feature old models anymore. Everyone is young. No one has gray hair. I don't know why they're trying to make Depend's sexier and youth-oriented, but they've got, you know, like a black woman, an Indian woman, a fat woman, Asian guy, black guy, fat white guy. I don't like how um, the only time white people are now featured is when they've got something else going on. You know, like we, the only time you can put a, a white person on packaging is if they're fat and gross. Actually, that's not true. I, I, I'm looking at one here. I'm pretty sure I would do this guy on the depend, despite the fact that he shits himself. <laughs> like putting that aside, uh, this this model for depends night defense. I don't know. He's doing something for me. Take a look at the chapter artwork. <laughs> this is my type. He's got a little bit of scruff, a diaper full of hot piss. My kind of man. Maybe we should just move on. Good God, there's a, there's a lot of different varieties of Depend. Night Defense, Real Fit, Skin Guard, Silhouette, Maximum Absorbency, Cool Ranch. What? A little bizarre. Apparently, uh, Depends wants to advertise the fact that lots of young people are pissing themselves. So I guess you shouldn't feel embarrassed about it if uh, if you're one of those people. All right, uh, let's move on. I do have some audio I want to share with you. Oh, first up, uh, Tyler Soros Rex in the Discord provided a link to a video uh, from a guy we featured a couple of times on the program. Uh, he goes into that virtual world second life and uh, just harasses people. He's just a giant jackass. And, you know, people in Second Life take it very seriously. They spend real money, so they're kind of protective of their spaces, right? That's why they get so angry when you hump their couch. Fuck off. What? You heard me. Fuck off. Why did you greet me? Douchebag. Why are you angry at me? Because you're humping the couch like a dork. I did not mean to do this. It just kind of happened. 
Do you think I traveled to people's houses to hump their couches? It was a mistake. Yeah, I'm betting it wasn't. This is not to say it's not the first time, you know? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you mind? Can I stay for a bit? Just at least let me finish. <laughs> yeah, I just don't shoot in on my clothes. That would upset me. I think this guy's kind of warming up to him. You're just gonna blow a load in your pants and make a mess, dude. We'll figure it out as we go. I did not expect to be doing this. I know this isn't my home, but... Could I possibly get some alone time? For some reason, this guy reminds me of Vlad. Timothy Hansanovich! This character's name, by the way, is Esteban Winsmore, and he pops up all over the place in Second Life. Are you single, baby? Oh, hell no. No? I take boy pussy. Boy pussy? What is this? Bend over, I'll show you. So you are looking for this boy pussy? I think that's a woman pretending to be a guy. And then he shows up at some sort of, like, concert where there's a little baby dancing, and I, I guess the parents are watching. This is very peculiar. Uh, what makes it peculiar? How much for the dancing one? He's not for sale. How much for the dancing one? They sell kids where you come from? Yes. <laughs> I have a pot of They're gold not. coins ready for the selling. Okay. I you have the that? gold coins for dancing. You hear this? This is me opening up my badge to show it to you. I'm a federal officer. What? Watch out. Their kids are not for sale. They will not take gold coins. Sorry. Selling children is illegal in this country. Which country? Punishable by prison, by prison sentence. This is the United States of America here. Yeah, I think we later find out that these people in Second Life are from Texas, and they're very protective of America. They seriously get pissed off. Are you sure? Oh yeah, these are American children. How well, old except is for that other one up there. She's she's from Korea. I will buy the Korean one for discount price. Right? No, you won't. No. How about I place you under arrest? I can't tell when these people are in character or when they're just really pissed off. No, the purchase of human human beings is illegal in the United States, Texas, punishable by federal law and life in prison. I would like to see your badge, officer. Look above my head. Oh, do most officers keep a badge above their head? Because I have yeah. never seen this. I you better tell him who he's jacking with over here. Okay, guys, this is crazy. Is Jay won't okay, let okay, his I'm done listening listen to him talk. Please do something. Yeah. Do what? <laughs> Throw him in jail already, God! Place me under the arrest, officer. Boy. You're ruining this concert. Oh my okay. God! You don't, you don't realize you could, you, you could be gone, yeah. right? Hey, you yeah, he don't realize know who you're talking to. He don't he know, know you. don't know who you're talking to, baby. What is this lawless fairyland you call United States? Oh, mm. wait a minute. Exactly. Wait a minute. What? Said, so wait a minute. Wait a minute I for what? I, I, I belong in the United States, and I don't want to hear any more. All you do is eat your cans of ham and complain. That pretty much does wrap up the entire American experience. Yes. Yeah, we have true, we have true freedom over here. What? To eat your ham? <laughs> well, there you go. Esteban making some friends in Second Life. I always get a kick out of those old videos. Thank you so much, Tyler Soros Rex, for digging that up. Uh, let's move on. This is a bit of a palate cleanser. I've got a, uh, a TikTok here from a woman who uh, is having a bit of a disagreement with her husband. So I guess my pussy stinks. That's why I'm in the bathtub. I'm sorry, this is supposed to be a palate cleanser. You made me vomit in my mouth. I guess the argument she's having with her husband or boyfriend, I'm sorry, it's her boyfriend. Her boyfriend says her cunt stinks. She doesn't smell it. She thinks he's being too sensitive. So I guess my pussy stinks. That's why I'm in the bathtub. My boyfriend's like, you stink. I'm like, what? I don't smell anything. He's like, of course you're not gonna smell anything because it's you. I'm thinking, you little shit, telling me that I stink, but that's why I'm taking a bath right now. Supposedly I stink, and I am on my period, so maybe that's why. Do we all stink on our periods? Let me know. Couple things. First of all, it's supposedly, not supposably, with a B. That drives me up the wall. Secondly, we don't have to share everything on social media. I feel like this is something young people still need to learn, but then I look at this video, I'm looking at her and I can't quite tell how old she is. 
She's either 21 or 51. You know, she's fat. That's sort of obscuring things. She's got a special ed haircut. You know, it, it, the hair's coming down over her forehead, but the hair is all different lengths in the front. It's almost cut diagonally. I'm, I don't know what the hell I'm looking at here. She's not attractive in the traditional sense. And then you add on top of that, all that talk about stinky pussy. I, I don't know who her audience is for. And then she wants people to comment. You know, she wants to get a discussion started about stinky pussy. You know, I mean, she's good at social media. She wants to push engagement, but I'm looking at the notifications here. No one has yet commented. I think we've all collectively decided to tap the fuck out. I wish I could say things are going to get less uh, nauseating here on the podcast, but unfortunately, I've got some clips from the 2005 short documentary, Eager for Your Kisses, Love and Sex at 95. Yeah, we're going to hear from old men talking about getting laid. This content actually fits in well with stinky pussies and Depends undergarment chat. Now, this film follows a 95-year-old singer-songwriter who uh, places personal ads and tries to get some, you know, elderly cunt. But in the last years of Helen's life, mm. she was unable to perform sexually, and uh, I... Uh, I wasn't either for uh, toward the end of it. So, but I didn't, there was no use, there was no reason for me to go to the doctor then because she didn't, she couldn't do it. She couldn't, she, there was her, her body just simply wasn't in shape for that anymore. And so there was no reason to, to try to get an erection. So you retired your penis. And, uh, so then when she left though, and, uh, and I uh, thought you'd take the old cock out for a spin again. Now, all of a sudden, you're interested in using it. Unfortunately, uh, it wouldn't start. I started thinking about dating again or whatever. I thought I'd better see the doctor and see if there was a possibility that I could get this back. I mean, this guy's almost 100 years old. There's only so much science can do, right? But now there are so many ways that men can... Uh, can achieve an erection and, uh, and and please a woman. I don't think it's become a problem. It's as big a problem as it was. I use a, I use a, a system that. Uh, yeah, it's not just a method. It doesn't sound like this is just a pill he's taking. It's an entire system, a multi-level, multi-stage program utilizing pharmaceuticals, robotics, space-age polymers. A team at NASA is helping him launch his dick every once in a while. There's a whole team that facilitates the launch and lift off of that thing. All right, I can't wait. Describe the system here. I use a, I use a, a system that uh, a lot of men probably wouldn't use, but then... Uh, Why? Why wouldn't they? Well, it's, I use a hypodermic needle. Isn't that what some porn guys do to get an erection real quick? They jab their cock with some sort of fluid. What do you have to do? Penetrate my penis at the cavernosa and inject a fluid, which is very, very effective. What about your urologist when you first brought it up? He was grossed out. Everyone I talk to about my penis is grossed out. Here's the thing. This guy is like, you know, he's 95 years old and he's dating other 95 year old women. Can they even feel anything down there? Is it worth rocking wood? What was his reaction when you talked about it? I mean, you were 90 years old. Did he encourage you or? He just said, well, we'll give it a try. And he uh, he penetrated me with a needle and he says, I'll be back. And he gave me a pornographic magazine to look at, <laughs> which didn't do anything for me. But, but uh, liar, he came back and things that happened he said yeah i think it's gonna work all right for you so this guy likes to go ballroom dancing so there's like a lot of footage of him dancing with women and then it'll just cut to stuff like this there's an area in the penis of called the cavernosa and we're right back to cock talk so he's talking about how men get erections you know how the, the dick gets full of blood and the dick gets hard i mean so much that it, it creates a, an <laughs> erection and that's probably almost like a rock sometimes and uh just because of the pressure. Oh, 
Back to ballroom dancing. Most women my age have really dry cunts. Back to ballroom dancing. This short film was created and directed by this old man's granddaughter, which is weird to be having a conversation like that. Filming your granddad talking about his sex life. Injecting his cock with boner serum. When my dad told me my 95-year-old grandfather was having sex, I couldn't believe it. I was in my early 30s, and... I hadn't had sex in over a year. Meanwhile, pee paws over here, like... If, I, if my body w- wouldn't wear out, I could, I could be making love for two hours. No one wants that. No one! The old lady that you're boning doesn't want that? I mean, look, you guys are on a, a kind of a tight schedule at this point. You don't have a lot of time left on this planet. If you want to have sex, great. It doesn't need to be this extended thing, though. You gotta look at this shit like dog years. You know, two hours of sex for you, that's like fucking for seven days or something. It's gonna shorten your life by a week. I don't know. I'd be careful with all of that. All right, uh, real quick, before we get into the news, I wanted to mention the case of this uh, Twitch streamer who recently got banned. Now, this kid plays Fortnite, and I guess it was his full-time gig streaming and playing these games. You got to be careful on, uh, you know, YouTube, of course. We all know YouTube is trigger happy with the goddamn demonetization and then ban hammer and all that stuff. But Twitch is as well. I think they're even worse than YouTube. And the reason is a lot of younger people watch Twitch. That's who uses that product. So uh, when the idiot, what's his name? Hydra SZN. Uh, When he said this, he had to have known the writing was on the wall. Fucking retard. Oh, my God. Not not retard. I think that's okay. I think you're allowed to call opponents retards. Thank God, right? We haven't gone completely mad over here. Fucking retard. Oh, my God. Can we start? No, I like kids. Well, I swear to God, I do. All my life, I'm a little child predator. What, bro? Why did he say that? I don't know. He was losing. Then he just blurted it out. My theory is that he was pretending to have Tourette's, you know, for the lulls. Fucking retard. Let's see exactly what he said here after the retard. Can we start? No, I like kids. Well, see, like the no, no, I like kids. Start. No, I like very Tourette's like, like fake Tourette's like. Can we start? No, I like kids. Well, I swear to God, I do. All my life, I'm a little child predator. What, bro? Then he just sort of throws his controller and puts his head in his hands. It's funny, but that's all it took uh, for him to be banned. And, you know, 10, 15 years ago, I think that joke could have flown without him getting in trouble, right? I mean, does anyone really think this guy is a child predator? He's 20 years old. He's practically a kid himself. I mean, come on. I mean, I think everyone is being a little too stringent with the rules here. Yeah, okay, it was in poor taste. But who the fuck cares if it's in poor taste, you know? If you don't like it, watch something else. Again, I'm thinking the big issue here is that uh, a lot of viewers of Twitch are young. According to a news story here, Twitch has given him an indefinite suspension. Hydra SZN posted a screenshot to a Twitter, or X, showing that Twitch had permanently banned him because of the content. The email stated, We've removed your content as it included elements that could put you or someone you know at risk. This includes content that could encourage inappropriate attention towards people under the age of 18. They're afraid a bunch of pedophiles are going to check out this kid's content. Ooh, we have a sympathizer. He's pretty young and twinkish. It's funny because he posted the screenshot and then Hydra said, What the fuck? All my hard work. I'm done, man. I'm so done. Yeah, well, the good news is you're only 20. You've got a lifetime of future bands to look forward to. Hydra also said, this is all because some guy has a vendetta against me. I want to quit. Well, you don't have to quit. You've been banned. Someone has done the quitting for you. Nothing ever goes my way. A real sad sack over here. In a follow-up, Hydra SZN tried to appeal the ban, but Twitch stood by their decision. In reality, he doesn't want to quit. He just moved over to a competing service, uh, one called Kick. So that's where he's streaming now. 
The news story also mentions uh, that this isn't the first time a Fortnite streamer has gotten in trouble after child predator comments or actions. In 2021, Twitch banned a Brazilian streamer after he was arrested for allegedly raping two children. Now, see, that's a little bit different than what's happening here. This guy actually did the raping. You don't want to lump him together with poor little Hydra here pretending to have Tourette's. You got to be careful what you say. Or better yet, just get a podcast. Post it yourself. You can say whatever you want. Also, do a Google search for little Asian girls' feet. Oh, you'll thank me. Oh, okay. Well, that that was taken out of context. Rape my boy pussy. Rape my boy pussy. Okay. Well, that one was not taken out of context. I really wanted someone to rape my boy pussy. Timmy Boo gets horny occasionally. He turns to his listeners for a little help. I could be making love for two hours. Never mind. I don't need your help. I found my dream man. There's uh, not a chance in hell this guy's still alive, right? Uh, does anyone know if you can inject that dick boner serum in a corpse penis? Just wondering. All right. And with that, let's get into the crazy bizarre twist. To the fucked up news right now. <laughs> If you're not yet members of the Sideshow, what are you waiting for? Help support this stupidity. Become a true and honorable freak today. When you do, you will instantly gain access to all of the exclusive shows we do every week. Yes, the show is called Distorted View Daily, but it's only truly daily if you're Sideshow members. Typically on Tuesday and Thursday, I do Sideshow exclusive uh, episodes. This week was no different. Oh, and they were so much fun. For instance, if you want to know what Mead's true weight is, we covered that extensively on yesterday's podcast. Yeah, Mead did a weigh-in, and it was everything I hoped it could be and more. Uh, Superfreaksideshow.com, all major credit cards and PayPal accepted. Memberships are very inexpensive, only $6.99 a month, even less when you opt for a quarterly, semi-annual, yearly, or lifetime membership. For an even easier way, if you happen to use Apple Podcasts, or Spotify to listen to the show, you can sign up for Sideshow Access right inside those apps. Just a few taps, bing, bang, boom, you're in. Use Apple Pay to pay if you want, which is very convenient. The Sideshow exclusive episodes will appear right alongside the uh, the normal episodes in your feed in those apps. So very cool. Uh, check it out. For more information, go to distortedview.com and, of course, superfreaksideshow.com. One last way to help support the program, we've got a Patreon account patreon.com slash distorted view you can pledge as little as a dollar over there every little bit helps although if you pledge at least five you get access to a special voicemail line where i will play your calls first gotta say thanks to jason one of our the jason show i don't think it was that jason uh jason is one of our newest patrons dave frank also some new patrons uh, again patreon.com slash distorted view thank you to everyone who continues to support this podcast all right three very quick stories now first up. what the hell is that warning prepare for an incoming piss seminar i repeat prepare for a piss seminar what the hell is a piss seminar? What is up, brothers? So when we're urinating, I can really recommend urinating with your bros. Oh, no, it's Will Blunderfield. It looks like he wants to share with us some primal piss technologies real quick. All right, I'll give you a minute today, Will. We're kind of busy. We're, you know, we're in the news segment now. And also, if you're intact, Ugh. pulling back the foreskin so that you don't get urine stuck underneath. Mm, a good tip, I guess. I think most people who are uncut know that, though. I mean, I hope so. I mean, you guys pull your foreskin back, right? Pulling back the foreskin so that you don't get urine stuck underneath. It's also a really great way to bond because when you pull back the foreskin, you get those beautiful pheromones emanating into the environment that you're in. So your cock stink is released into the air. Which is going to trigger your bro to feel more juicy, more erotic, <laughs> and also more filled with testosterone because studies have shown i want my male friends to feel juicy when i pee next to them because studies have shown studies out of the naked sauna culture what that's not a thing <laughs> studies from the sauna culture uh in sweden and uh -huh. finland that when men get naked in saunas 
and are able to see each other's genitalia and sniff each other's genitalia through the pheromonal secretions, almost like a potpourri of divine masculine juju, uh, their testosterone levels actually go up. Well, there you go. If you have low T issues, may I suggest smelling dick? Just go around every guy you know asking if you can smell his cock. All right. Thank you very much, Will. Go away. Interrupted my flow with his flow. All right. A first story we have for you today. I don't know why this keeps happening, but another celebrity has been announced to be dead. And it turns out that's not exactly true. Upon further review, he's, I guess, just he's fine. He's alive and well. Uh, but at one point, he was dead at the age of 36, according to news outlets. Josh Cedar appeared on uh, The Bachelorette, so he's not exactly a you know A-list celebrity. He was a contestant on an old-ass, crusty dating show. Quote, It is with an extremely heavy heart that we share the tragic news of Joshua's unexpected passing, the statement read. As all who knew him can attest, Joshua was an incredibly bright light in an increasingly dim world. His fearless voice and indomitable spirit helped thousands of people in their darkest moments. What the fuck did this guy do? He was trying to get laid on national television. He didn't, like, set up a charity to provide blankets to lepers or something. I mean, it would be nice if lepers needed blankets. I don't know. Do lepers need blankets? Body parts are falling off. I need. I guess they need something to collect them. Whatever. The statement goes on. It says, although our heartache at Joshua's passing pains up beyond measure, we find comfort in... I mean, it doesn't really matter what the statement is because it's not true. One thing I was interested in was, like, how did he supposedly die, right? And uh, they alluded to the fact that it may have been suicide. In the statement, it says, like, if you need help with mental whatever, call this crisis line. Again, Joshua is alive and well. I don't even know if he's struggling with mental issues, right? Uh, well, here's the update. Days after Joshua Cedar, a bisexual former contestant. Yeah, let's vilify him now. How does the media do it? By announcing his sexuality. Only a bisexual would be so deviant to fake his own death. To be fair, I'm reading this update from uh, The Advocate, which is like a gay rag. Not like a cum rag, like, you know, a magazine rag. Days after Josh Cedar, a bisexual former contestant on The Bachelorette in 2015, was reported dead online, uh, only to be alive and well less than 24 hours later, the reality TV star is facing tough questions. Like, did you do this yourself for publicity, you monster? Sounds like something a bisexual would do. After Cedar claimed that his account had been hacked, oh... That was his first explanation. Uh, many people online and in the media questioned whether the episode was staged. Cedar denied that he was behind the post about his death, uh, but did say he's sorry for anyone affected by the incident. After he uh, deleted the death announcement, uh, he then recorded a video for his fans. Hey guys, as you can see, um, I am alive and well. Um, my account was hacked um, for the last 24 hours. I've been trying desperately to get into it. Um, somebody... He doesn't have any other social media accounts. Like, he could have got onto Facebook or notified news outlets that he was alive pretty quickly. You know what I mean? It does seem a, a bit suspicious. Um, was playing a cruel joke and mocking my mental illness and the struggles I've gone through with depression and suicide attempts. And um, I'm sorry for all the pain they caused. He also said that he's going to get his team on this and try to figure out who did this to him. It all seems pretty fishy because uh, he said, you know, he told the newspaper he started to receive text messages shortly after, uh, you know, his account was hacked and they posted the thing about him dying. Uh, so, you know, there was a bunch of concerned people messaging him and he said he did reply to a few concerned people to tell them that he, that he was fine, but he refused to provide their names or contact information to the newspaper, you know, to verify his claims. After recognizing that something was wrong with his account, Cedar said his anxiety began to set in. Oh, and that's why he didn't do something right away. Blame it on your mental illnesses. He did regain his account, he says, at 1 p.m. Central Time on Tuesday, about a day after the news got out. In response to a question about how he regained access to his account, Cedar gave inconsistent answers. 
At first, he said a friend helped him get back into his account, and then later on, he said it was a family member with experience at a tech company who solved his access issue. He says I relied on a family member who is fairly high up and worked in Silicon Valley and knows how to do computer programming. After agreeing to provide contact information for the person who allegedly assisted in restoring his account, Cedar then declined to pr- to provide that information. Also, remember when I said, you know, what he should have done is just contacted the news organizations who wrote the stories about his death to correct them. Well, this news organization, The Advocate, uh, suggested that. Like, why didn't you do that? And he got all defensive. He also claims that he doesn't use other social media platforms. It's only Instagram. Oh, apparently he does have an OnlyFans account, but that's been untouched for a while. He says it's so easy to criticize and easy to say, oh, I would have done this or I would have done that. Yeah, it's like basic shit. Someone says you're dead. You say, no, I'm not. You contact the people who are saying that you're dead. How can this guy function as an like, even if you have a mental illness, you know this. He says the course of action that I chose at that moment as myself having been hacked, dealing with anxiety, taking medication, having panic attacks during the situation was not, uh, quote, hey, TMZ, what's up? It's Josh. I want to first calm down, get a hold of myself and figure out my main priorities, which was getting control of my account. By the way, on his Instagram account, he refers to himself as a mental health pioneer. I would not follow him out west, if you know what I mean. I'm not even sure I know what I mean. Think about it. And if you can explain it to me, call into the voicemail line. Thank you. All right. Second story we have for you to you know, you know how uh, you know, there are some good Chinese restaurants in, in most neighborhoods. There are also Chinese restaurants that you know to stay away from. They're questionable at best. I wondered if this was a phenomenon that was limited to the United States. Like, if you go over to the UK, do they have sketchy Chinese restaurants or are they pretty classy joints? Or at the very least, sanitary, not serving raccoon meat and pretending it's Mongolian chicken or what? You know what I mean? Well, I think I have an answer. If you take a trip to the UK, you're going to want to be careful when it comes to the Chinese restaurants. Be just as suspicious as you are here in the U.S., An online video has been turning stomachs after a shocked takeaway customer found a mouse in his Chinese food. I happen to have that video right here. Chinese from Gillian. I've started eating it. I've just opened up my soup and I'm not even making this up. What the is that in the bottom of my soup moving? Yeah, it's moving. It's twitching. The mouse is still alive, which means not only are they serving mice as meat, They're not even cooking it thoroughly. You don't want to bite into medium rare mouse. Seriously, is that a mouse or something? Because that is in my soup. Yeah, it's a mouse. That I've literally just opened and got. Oh my God. No way. Sam Haywood sat down on Tuesday evening to enjoy the meal brought home by his girlfriend. However, the 39-year-old from Strood open his tub of mushroom noodle soup to discover the floating rodent, which, uh, like I said, was still twitching. He said, uh, the missus rang me up and asked if I wanted anything to eat, and I said I fancied a jacket potato. That's got to be one of those British isms, right? It's like it's going to be some normal food that Brits have a weird name for. It's like, you know, you ask them what you're going to have for dinner, and and they're like, we're going to have some dirty knockers and brown sauce. We're going to have a sticky dingo and crispy plink plonk pudding. And you're like, what the fuck is that? And you look it up and it's steak and eggs or something, you know? Plink plonk pudding apparently is egg yolk. And sticky dingo is just, it's just a beef steak. I don't know. I made that up. I'm looking up what the fuck a jacket potato is. It looks like it's a, a jacket potato is um a baked potato. See, I was right. Just a stupid name for something we have over here. Well, unfortunately, he didn't get his jacket potato. Oh, the missus must have won out. What did she, she wanted Chinese food. Yeah, she wanted Chinese, so she won that one. I was probably about halfway through eating, if not more, when I saw it. I couldn't believe it. It made me sick. I probably spent about 25 minutes in the toilet uh, after trying to make myself sick. Not knowing what to do, Sam, who owns a building company decided to film the mouse as it twitched around in the soup. It was drowning. It was drowning in the soup. 
He posted the video on social media where it went on to be shared by more than uh, 300 people in less than 24 hours. It's not exactly viral, but okay. Even uh, more commented, mostly showing their disgust. Sam continued, I was still in shock. I didn't know why I filmed it, but I did. I mean, if you were in the U.S., I mean, that, that's a lawsuit. I would definitely sue. The first thing I wanted to do was get mad at someone, so I phoned the takeaway up, and they said, prove it. The thing was, my missus used cash only, and we didn't get a receipt, so we couldn't. Kent Online contacted the Chinese restaurant in question, and though it confirmed it had seen the video, it firmly denies its involvement. It said the food was not from its restaurant. You should always get a receipt. There should always be a paper trail when it comes to food. You never know who you're going to have to sue. Uh, Sam said he had not yet reported the issue to Medway Council's Environmental Health Department, which I guess is the next step there. Always be suspicious of Chinese food. All right, uh, final story we have for you to jump. Look, I spared you from having to look at that mouse twitching around in soup. I did not include that in the chapter artwork. I am going to turn your attention now to the chapter artwork because a man has been pulled over by police because he had a bull in the passenger seat, which uh, who knew that was against the law? It had its seatbelt on. I wouldn't have even given this guy a ticket. I mean, sure, you can pull him over and say, look, you need to get this bull out of your, your truck. It can't be there. But... Don't, don't make him pay a fine. This is a true feat of engineering. How he was able to get a full, a full size bull in the car. Logistically, I don't even know how that's possible. I'm looking at this thing. I like, I, he had to like rig something up like a gate because <laughs> some of the bull was spilling out. All right. Police in Nebraska were left shocked after they pulled over a man for driving on a motorway with a huge bull in the passenger seat officers received reports of the bull reportedly named howdy duty in a vehicle but assumed it would be a small calf or an animal that would normally fit inside the man's car no no to their amazement the enormous black and white bull with large horns was standing with most of its body sticking outside of the modified small white vehicle as it traveled down Highway 275 on Wednesday morning. The passenger side door had been replaced with a metal barred guardrail that's usually found in a cattle enclosure. So yeah, the bull was in the car, but modifications had to be made, you know, which stands to reason. A sign on the barrier read, Nebraska's Big Rodeo Parade, Best Car Entry. The man, Lee Meyer, was pulled over for traffic violations, the officer wrote him some warnings. Oh, so they were just warnings. Okay, Police Captain Chad Raymond said there were some citable issues with that situation. The officer, though, chose to write him a warning. Aw, so glad the police officer was a good guy, you know, in this uh, case. All right, the officer chose to just write him a warning and ask him to take the animal back home and leave the city. Don't come back. The bull is a modern American breed of domestic cattle that is characterized by its very large horns. As you can see from the picture there, it derives from breeds originally from East and Central Africa. So uh, there you go. A bull was riding bitch. And it wasn't even a truck or a van, like a larger vehicle. It was literally a Ford sedan. I don't know what it was, a Crown Victoria or something? Not a, I've got a great animated gif of this car driving with the bull down the road. Take a look at it uh, over there at distortedview.com and, of course, superfreaksideshow.com. Well, there you go. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Friday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of here. All right. Love to hear from you, freaks. And there are many ways to contact the show. Show at distortedview.com. I'm all over social media at distortedview on Twitter and Instagram. Facebook.com slash distortedviewshow. Of course, voicemail line for you, 206-666-4463. Although if you pledge at least $5 over there uh, on our Patreon campaign, you get access to a special voicemail line uh, where I will play your calls first. And of course, I've got a bunch of calls here. I think a lot of people are calling in because of the Mead, uh, Mead's dad death pool. I think we have about 12 or 13 people already participating. Uh, so we're going to blow through a lot of these today just because I'm getting packed up. Uh, yes, caller. What do you have for me today? Jimmy Boo, what a do. This is Necro Foucher. I am calling to get in on the death pool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, based on recent events, with the broken ribs, 
Sure. And because he's such a piece of shit, I'm going to hope for his holiday season to be ruined forever <laughs> and guess that his daddy will die on December 25th oh. of this year, Christmas Day. Hmm. One of the most holiest of days. Hey, Tim, this is Ziggo. Hey, Ziggo. I cannot get it out of my head that whenever you uh, mock the uh, British guy... He's really obsessed with this model, yeah. pretty Steve Dawson. I cannot get over the fact that it sounds to me like you're doing a David Bowie impression. Right, or rather, I've you got were a learning difficulty. Come on, that, that, that's David Bowie. Remind me <laughs> of pretty a guy in a podcast I listen to who plays a D and D character that is yeah. essentially a parody of David Bowie. I'll I'll play a little clip of. What he sounds My like. My pretty, pretty. Like, yeah. Egg boy puts the eggs down. Listen, uh, I know you're, oh, you all have your eggs. But if you want the bakey too, there's a bacon boy. Oh, please, the door. Oh, no, the no, thing is, you got to put the eggs in the bacon oh, together. He's covered in grease. And he's covered uh, in grease on. because of all the bacon. Don't get any freaky eyes. All the grease and the bacon is too greasy. Come on, the grease splatters. Jesus. <laughs> We're both, we're just awful at our British impressions. I'm so sorry for those of you that live in the UK that have to put up with me. That awful, So to me, awful when voice. you do your ding dong, baby, mocking that British ding, guy, ding dong. you sound like an American who's doing an admittedly very, very good parody oh, of well. David Bowie. Thank you very much, Zico. I'll take it. That, that was kind of a compliment, right? <laughs> Hey, Tim. It's Tom in Tennessee. Uh, get out your spreadsheet for me, Dad, Deadpool. All right. <laughs> um, I'm from Tennessee. I started listening to your podcast when I was 44. So I'm going to take four and four and say April the 4th, 2024. Damn. A lot of people guessing April is going to be when uh, Mead's dad dies. Hey, boo. Back to come here. Long time caller. First time listener. Uh, hey, on uh, yesterday's show, uh, you said something about uh, chess.com. Uh -huh. uh, now, I know it might be a little tricky, but if you look closely, you'll see that it's actually pronounced poutine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is something I think we talked about on Thursday's show. I made a bit of an error on Wednesday's program uh, when I said that uh, chess <laughs> chess only had four letters. When in fact, uh, after double checking and triple checking, chess the word chess does in fact have five letters. And uh, my good friend Joey brought this to my attention and I immediately started to freak out saying, oh God, no, my listeners will never ever let that die. It's going to be like wing from South Park all over again. Or Putin, Putin. Although I will say this, I did have someone come to my defense. I believe it was Illyrio, longtime listener Illyrio. He said, you know, technically chess does only have four letters, four distinct letters, C, H, E, and S. So in a way, if you if you think about it, I you know, I'm right, you know, and you guys are right, because it is five letters, but it is also four. His name is Charles, but his name is Lance. I'm using retard logic. So, you know, we're all right. We don't have to turn this into a whole thing that'll span years and years and drive me absolutely crazy with people calling up 10 years down the road telling me that chess is five letters like I'm an imbecile because apparently I am. So just knock it off. All right. <laughs> that is all the time we have on this edition of the show. Want you guys to email me? Show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. Voicemail line for you, 206-666-4463. That's 20666. Oh, God, is it? Oh, God. Which is going to trigger your bro to feel more juicy. Spread the distortion. STD. Tell all your friends about the program. Don't forget to give us a five-star rating, a thumbs up, or like wherever you can rate and review podcasts. Oh, real quick, programming note. Here in America, on Monday, we are celebrating Labor Day. And for once, I am going to take that day off. Monday's a vacay for me. I need some R&R, &R, baby, which basically just means I'm going to be playing Tears of the Kingdom for 12 to 14 hours straight. Still not done with that game. Uh, I'm almost done. Might wrap things up on Monday. 
I will have a best of show for you with a little uh, new introduction. So uh, you will have something to listen to. And then on Tuesday, I'll do a show for everyone. Wednesday's episode will be sideshow exclusive. You know, we'll just push everything back a day. You know how we do. This ain't our first rodeo. All right, listen, have a great weekend, guys. I will see you back next week. Until then, bye, everybody. A great Friday, you motherfucker! This has been another excellent podcast from the Scrub Media Group. Learn more at scrub.net.